Well, the role of the mass liaison officer, it's referred to as the MLO, uh, is operations, so it's logistics. What we do is we're here in support of uh, the military and the MAFS units. So we, um, I interface with the mission commander. So there's a mission commander on the military side and there's a MAFS liaison officer on the agency or state side. Well, the objective of the training is initially we need to do currency exercises. It's required on the military side that they do this with their pilots uh, annually. And then on the state and agency side, it's required two to three times, uh, or every two to three years uh, for different people. And what we want to do is really create that symbiotic relationship between the MLO and the mission commander and, you know, the ramp, the pilots and navigators and, you know, the, uh, the ramp personnel, the MABMs, when they're filling those planes and things like that. It's a very dangerous mission. By the time, uh, by the time mass is uh, requested assistance, generally speaking, uh, we are in a situation where the resources are running thin. Uh, fires, especially in the uh, the Southwest and you know the the West Coast here, it, they've been astronomical the past few years. On, it's all over the news, and so mass has been asked to uh, you know to engage. And when we're doing that. There's no time for that relationship building, how to, how to speak to one another. Because think about it, you're military and you, you, we're civilians. And you, know, you have your own language and we have ours. And you know, even though we're all in firefighting, we're all fire, you know, fighting the same fire, there are different uh, modalities. You know, we have people on the ground um, and then you, of course you've got people in the air. For me, for this year's training, I am actually here, I am the mass liaison on officer trainee. So I have been with the MAFS program for 15 years and when I joined uh, I didn't have any firefighter uh, experience. Uh, I didn't have any military background so it took me a while to learn how to work with the military, some of the language and how to work with fire and how that works. So what I'm, what I'm hoping to get out of this experience is to you know really improve on those skill sets. You know, if once, I, once you've been around for quite a while, I'm very familiar with how, how things work. However, when you're making those decisions, some of those decisions, they, they don't pop up all the time. And, it, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that I can engage more with my executive leadership so that, you know, I have the opportunity to come back out and fulfill this role during an activation. It's real exciting, you know, to see the planes and the pilot and the retardant, and you know that's that's the money shot. You know, those that's fabulous. Uh, but there is a lot of work that goes into behind the scenes, the operation, the logistics, uh, the finance. Um, you know, pulling all of these people together. You know, lodging, uh, getting them here, and things like that. So the mobilization, and I think it's not nearly as exciting as as, as watching that uh, retardant drop. Or uh, you know we're it's not the, we're not the heroes you know in uh, in that cockpit, but without these people that are uh, behind the scenes, managing and fulfilling all of these other um, ancillary uh, slots, you know, uh, in support of this mission, this wouldn't happen. So I really want to uh, emphasize how important that is. I work at Fox Tanker Base. I've been there for about let's say seven years now, started out actually working for FOSCheck for three years and then been on the Angelus for four years. Uh, overall duties are just uh, loading tankers, primarily working on the ramp or in the timekeeper box, but overall just tanker base operations, um, qualified manager so I can do a bit of it all for right now. Day-to-day uh, -day basis, uh, during operations, making sure the ramp is clear of FOD, making sure the tankers, uh, air support, uh, lead planes, air attacks are all situated and ready to go. Um, maintaining or delegating morning briefings, get that going for the morning, and overall just seeing what the fire needs and what our operation will look like. Uh, out here for MAFs, we're out here parking tankers, or parking the MAFs, loading MAFs, um, working with the air compressor, that's something new I haven't had to do yet. Um, but overall just being ground support for them so they can get their training and we can get our training and overall having a good day. Got a chance to work with the MAFS guys, got a chance to work with BLM, um, 
Forest Service is here as well, CAL FIRE. Overall, the interaction has been seamless. It seems like we've all been trained pretty well and we just mesh right away. Everyone knows what they're doing and knows and plugs their, uh, plugs their way in and where they need to be. And so far, it's been pretty good. Definitely having this training and already kind of getting a baseline on how the operation goes now. So in the future, just getting that integration will be that much easier and that much more cohesive. Oh yeah, definitely get on board. Definitely try and sign up on the list and get out here. It's good training and good exposure. Even if you're at bases that don't take masks, you never know, you might go to a base that can and it's just that much better, that much more training to be prepared and yeah, really good. Our interactions with other units have been good. Uh, whenever someone needs something, we super easy to go walk over to either Wyoming or California and ask for a tool or maybe another hand to help out. Yeah, there's a lot of knowledge sharing and networking that goes on. We have people, you know, that work both civilian or full-time out here, so there's a lot of piggybacking on ideas and showing each other different ways of doing things, and obviously we have the Jays out here as well, so they have some different knowledge on things that we don't, and we have different knowledge that they don't, so helping each other out really comes into play. Yeah, the civilian agencies out here always are really nice, you know, there's a lot of camaraderie, a lot of them are ex-military, and even the ones that aren't, they're kind of used to doing the program, so helping to, uh, they help us with the MAPS unit, obviously, and they've always been uh, really great. They helped us put one on uh, the first day we were here when we were having a little problems with it. So they're, they're very useful. Day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, we take care of the, just the uh, airplane. So we'll open it up in the morning, make sure it's all ready for the air crew to go. End of the night, we'll shut it down, do little pre-flights and any inspections that are required. Besides that, if the crew might call us up to inspect something that might not be working correctly, maybe help them with a little uh, fix in the switches or button pressing, and if not that, we can change components and make sure it's ready to go for the next flight. The training helps both us, and it's mostly for the pilots, obviously, to make sure they're up on their, their yearly, but it helps us. We have a lot of new guys out here kind of getting the gist of what we do and understanding our day-to-day, -day. so when they're ready to come and do it themselves, we can be, uh, feel a little more comfortable sending the newer guys. They have a little more of a look of what it's gonna be every day. I think it's just good to let everyone know that it's really a joint process out here. There are a lot of different moving parts. And, you know, obviously we have guys from ops, guys from maintenance. We have PA. Everyone's doing their part to, you know, come support this and show the community what we're out here doing. So I think it's a really good opportunity for everyone. So my role here for MAPS is anything that the MAPS team needs to be loaded onto an aircraft, that's pretty much my role. So, like, for example, we just loaded the whole MAPS unit a couple days ago when they first got here, and that was really cool. We got to set up chalk and all those things. There's a ton of officers that came here and it was really cool to get all their, to get all their knowledge. Talk about masks, I'd never done it. So it was really cool for them to explain the process of what happens in the sky. And then it's pretty cool to see it because when they fly, we know that we loaded it. So, and it was pretty rewarding in my opinion. Working with like my supervisors because the leadership in Aerial Port is pretty good. I was surprised. Like to come here and to have all of the sergeants just be so knowledgeable and to keep us on track because there's a lot of stuff that we don't know yet just coming back. So I think that was like the biggest takeaway, how knowledgeable they were about Mavs. I love the camaraderie here. It is like I've been talking with officers all day. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I met some ones from Wyoming, Nevada. It's pretty cool. We all they all come together here and like when they find something to get done, like there's so many people working on it, it gets done super quick. Okay, my role here is to provide communications and support for the MAPS units. So um, I'm responsible for providing the frequencies and making sure everybody on the ramp and on the planes have the right frequencies and they can talk to each other. Uh, my role here is very important because of communications. Everybody needs to talk. So I make sure that uh, when they do need to talk, they're able to talk on the radios and they have the right frequencies to do it. I've been doing this for about 28 years um, in my professional uh, series, but actually for with MAPS, I've been doing this for about uh, 10 to 11 years, I believe. When we come to MAPS, we work with other agency partners too. It's just not the, the military. We actually, you know, whoever needs radios, whether it be a contractor or a force service, BLM, uh, we actually provide them the radios that they need to support uh, their job out in the field. Well, the setup uh, takes uh, takes a while because we need to find out who's coming, uh, how many folks are going to be showing up, so uh, we're prepared on uh, how many radios we need to support it, and also uh, to actually bring uh, folks in to help and help do the training. You know, I feel great. Uh, I feel that, you know, truly this is an interagency organization where you come here and it uh, doesn't matter who you are, who you're from, we actually come here and do one job and do it good, so. A role for the crew chiefs out here at MAFS, we are basically the caretakers of the airplane. Anytime the airplane needs to be serviced, put fuel on it, we're the ones who will do that. 
My role for as a crew chief for the VAST mission, basically we are the maintainers of the aircraft once ops comes back from their missions. We'll put fuel on them and also service the aircraft and just do general inspections, make sure the airplane's good to go for the next day. We'll stay late if we have to, get everything done, make sure the aircraft is perfect and ready to fly. This is my first MAPS mission. I'm very new out here, but I got the opportunity to come up as a new person and get to see, I guess, just something that's high paced, having to go, 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 stay long hours and work really hard. But overall, I'd say the experience has been really good. I've been learning a lot. I love it out here. Yes, the other units that we've been working with uh, have been very helpful, the camaraderies there. Uh, one big thing we've been doing is training patches around. So uh, one of the Wyoming guys, they, they said, oh, the high roller patch looked cool. And so I said, all right, we'll swap. And so I guess I'll add this to the wall when I get back. One big takeaway was expecting anything to happen. There was a night where an aircraft came back and there was a unforeseen hydraulic issue that we had to tackle and we ended up having to work with the hydro shop together and get that soldered so the next day the airplane was good to go. The experience with working with another unit was definitely very great for us. It shows that we can always trust on others not who aren't even in your unit to help us out. If we needed a question or help with something they could always come and help us and vice versa. Oh, right now we're learning how to operate the MAPS units and how to work with uh, the military folks um, to their standard. So basically meshing what we do together. Um, they're out here, on, it's basically a drill for them, but for us it's initial, my, me for initial training, um, how to work the MAPS unit, everything from the compressor, how to park the aircraft, the way they, they operate. If MAPS gets activated, uh, it helps me able to function anywhere in the country. Anywhere MAPS goes, I, I, I could go and uh, assist. My big takeaway from this is everything from networking to speaking with other folks and learning about their bases and how they operate with learning with the cooperators, which is military. So having, uh, having that knowledge to where, that you're able to be activated and go anywhere the, uh, the Air Guard goes to help with support their mission. I, I feel confident that uh, I'll be able to perform my duties at the highest ability. Uh, because of the, the training here today. Uh, actually, I just want to thank everybody. Thank everybody for, for making, making this training what it is, bringing their knowledge to the table and, and uh, helping me, a civilian, learn how the uh, Air Force operates their, their Air Guard units and how we work together. Just, just a big thanks to everybody.